कमिंग टू वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सब्जेक्ट नाउ कितने लोगों ने देखा है कि अपना इलेक्ट्रिसिटी बिल विदाउट एनी राइम और रीजन बढ़ता है घटता है कभी लगता है कि सला टर्न ओवर सौ रुपए में दो रुपए आता था आज तो ढाई रुपये आ गया तीन रुपये आ गया होता है ना पर क्यों होता है कभी किसी ने सोचा सोचा तो है बट सॉल्यूशन कई बार नहीं मिलता दैट इज अ प्रिसाइज रीजन मिस्टर श्रीधर वी इज हियर टूडे टू स्प्रेड ज्ञान ऑन पावर श्रीधर इज अ साइंस ग्रेजुएट फ्रॉम मुंबई ही हैड परसुएटेड हिज पोस्ट ग्रेजुएट इन सिस्टम्स एंड सिस्टम्स एनालिसिस एंड ऑपरेशन रिसर्च फ्रॉम यू एस ए हिज फॉर्म ऑफर्स सोल्यूशन इन द फील्ड ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिकल पावर क्वालिटी एंड हैव सर्विस मैनी कस्टमर्स अक्रॉस वर्टिकल्स फॉर मोर देन थर्टी ईयर्स नाउ एंड हिज मेन फोकस इज टू डिजाइन पावर सोल्यूशन विच गिवस क्लीन एंड कंसिस्टेंट पावर क्वालिटी आई वुड वेलकम मिस्टर श्रीधर टू बी ऑन द स्टेज एंड present your carried features on power everyone knows how many of you have read it see see that's why we said today let me speak a few lines for you know maybe about 15 20 minutes so that you get an idea of the whole thing and then maybe you can look out for these back issues because there are some very relevant you know today everything is clubbed अरे मशीन बंद पड़ गया क्यों पावर फ्लक्चुएशन दर इज वन सिंगल टर्म यूज फ्लक्चुएशन दैट इज आई हैव पुट अ यू पी एस आई पुट दिस आई पुट दैट एवरीबडी सेज फ्लक्चुएशन आ गया हो गया देन वाई वॉट इज हैपनिंग तो वॉट आई इंटेंट डूइंग इज आई एम गोन टू आई हैव रिक्वेस्टेड दिस इज द फर्स्ट इशू दैट केम आउट इन द मंथ ऑफ नवंबर ओके द हेडिंग से इज क्वालिटी पावर एनर्जाइज प्रिंट बिकॉज यू आल आर इन द प्रिंट इंडस्ट्री who invented or innovated the light bulb yeah we remember what we learned in school yes thomas alva edison and way back in 1879 and it has transformed our lives today like breathing electricity is also become ingrained in we can't live in fact i know my children will not be able to survive if there's no electricity you and i may still do that now having said that every device today works on electricity and electricity is generated at a power station it travels miles on the high tension lines it reaches our industries where the larger industries have their own transformers the smaller industries have a transformer which is shared and then we utilize we also know why is it only in india we hear so much of power problem and not somewhere in the western country the main answer is only discipline in a western country you cannot add a load without a sanction and without him certifying that he has enough capacity here a house is built and then inside we have tonnage and tonnage of acs nobody checks up neither does the electricity board check till the transformer goes bust so that means ram barose cholo jab tak chalta hai cholo so when we come back the word fluctuation gambits an entire arena out of which the sag is a condition where the voltage dips for a few cycles 56% of the time there are voltage sags that are happening and nobody can prevent it this is because of our own machine switching on and switching off i'm going to come to that swell is a reverse when i have a sudden high energy coming in and that you will see sorry how do i close this usko band kar so that you will see is roughly 31% so the bulk of the this is taken care by sags and swells 6% is the only outage and probably in a place like mumbai it's probably less in some places it's much higher that is a total power failure and the spikes are 7% now let us understand the complexity of power so we'll go to the uh, the next issue this was a november issue on which the article is there so you can look it up in detail now let me go to the december issue the december issue talks of 
disrupt the power disturbances. So we need to really understand what is what. So the first one, which is the voltage surge, that is the inline uh, swell, is caused by large load shutdown. So you may have, you know, some, you have multiple machines. So one of your ma major machines shuts down. The moment it shuts down, it's going to create a swell within your factory. So let's not say it's all coming externally. 75% of the power aberrations or disturbances happen within our facility, and there's no way you can stop it. The second are the interruptions, which are, though rare in Bombay, do happen. But in other places, they have power, they do not know when it can go. Here, at least we say Friday is a day where, okay, if you want to run, run on a generator, or run those applications which can take a power off and up breaks. Then brownouts. Brownouts are those conditions where consistently you're having a low voltage. Or, okay, now that can be very easily taken care by none other than our normal servo voltage stabilizer because it has got a range. So if, we are, if it is within that range, even a low voltage is brought back and your activity can function. So brownout is the easiest to handle. The sags happen in such short duration of time, that is in milliseconds, no voltage stabilizer can handle sags and swells. So if you think you have a voltage stabilizer and you're protected, please, that's a wrong notion. I'm going to explain to you also that. So there are solutions for each of these problems. You can switch to the next one, the January. Okay, now meanwhile, since we spoke of the stabilizer, I'm going to show you what happens actually in a stabilizer. And by the way, we are very much into stabilizers. We will continue to sell stabilizers. We just need to know for what kind of activity we should use a voltage stabilizer and where we should not. I'll take a, an example of a single phase stabilizer and then it can very easily be seen from a three phase perspective. Let's say all our machines, we require Let's say 400 volts for an example. Somewhere it's 380, somewhere 415, somewhere 400. I'll take a simple example of 400. So I want 400 volts steady, plus minus 1%. That means my single phase voltage I need is 230 volts, plus minus 1%. And root three times of this is nothing but 400 volts. So how does a voltage stabilizer work? Among the electronics controls, and the feedback circuits, there's nothing but a variable transformer with an arm, with a carbon brush that moves across the armature. By increasing or decreasing the windings, it will add or subtract the voltage. So, in a voltage stabilizer, let's assume a stabilizer has a range, I'm talking on single phase parlance, it can always be seen on a three phase perspective. I'm having 170 to 270 volts as an input range. Correspondingly, in a three-phase, we call it as 300 to 465. And let's say the stabilizer, at a point of time, my supply voltage was 190, and that particular single phase, because we have one on each phase, and that's how we work. I was getting the perfect 230. Now this 190 volts I was getting, which my stabilizer was correcting and giving 230, Let's say this 190 volts suddenly increased to 240 volts. So, what you're seeing here, how much is the jump? 50 volts has gone up, right? What do you think you're going to get out of the stabilizer? 230? Now I'm going to give you the answer which is going to shock each and every one of you. This 50 volts will plus add. What are you going to get? 280 volts. Momentarily, you will get 280 volts, and we will demonstrate to you. In a short time, we'll have videos which I will share with BMPA, and you will get to see it, because this is the way it works. And in two seconds, it'll come back to 230. Because the correction speed of any voltage stabilizer is typically 20 to 25 volts per second. You got it? So the need for speed. So we come back to the need for speed. So my voltage never saw 280, yet my machinery saw 280 volts. But bulk of the stabilizers will work where you're having motors, where you're having compressors, where you're having heating elements, 
Do not worry, none of them are going to get affected. In fact, your olden day analog machines would never have failed because they are not susceptible. But the moment they brought in electronics, all microprocessor electronics can handle this voltage change for only one fiftieth of a second. You get it? And two seconds is, you know, how many milliseconds? Two seconds is 2,000 milliseconds. So one second is 1,000 milliseconds. So you need a device that can correct with one fiftieth of a second, or that is 20 milliseconds. And the only device which is available and which why vendors today are saying go for a UPS, go for a UPS, even though you don't have a power failure, is because only a UPS can do that. So would you all be happy if there was something that can do that without the battery and the extra cost? It's available in India now. Not only now, it's been there for five years. The print industry has embraced it in the last two and a half years. I'll come to that. So besides that, you have voltage transients, frequency variations. Before I go, this stabilizer is here to stay. So in your factory, if you're having a lot of machines, each machine has a designed voltage. If you run the machine at that designed voltage, it's going to work most efficiently. That means efficiency high, losses are lower. So you have to make a chart of all your machines and find out the design parameter. At what voltage does this machine work best? We can use these stabilizers to bring it to that voltage and you will save energy. It will pay for itself. So there's, this voltage stabilizer is not going to go. But this is not going to help me to protect my electronics. We have done some work with some machines where um, the machine has an electronics. That means there's a control. So there is a brain and there is a working element. If only the machine manufacturers were to share with us a system whereby I can isolate the supply to the brain, okay, then I can put a very high and fast voltage correcting device just for the brain and allow the rest of the elements to work on this. Everything will work. But that's not been really happening. In very few machines, we've been able to do that. So there are so many, now we come to harmonic distortions. Now those harmonic distortions are created by sometimes the UPS itself, the olden day UPSs which are using thyristors, your VFDs which are using thyristors. When your thyristor goes bad, it creates such high harmonics. Okay, and those harmonics can cause burnouts because the currents are very high. Now there are solutions for everything. That means they need to be monitored, they need to be measured. So it's like a doctor trying to see the holistic picture and trying to pinpoint where the problem is. Switch. So, next. Yene, four ne, it's page two, PPTA. Yeah, so I was talking to you. Ah, great. So this is okay. Now coming back, uh, we are a startup. In 1984, we got together. In 86, we founded the company Online Systems. And my forte into the print packaging, I'm very thankful to Tushar and Hemanji, who have placed immense trust in our solutions and have also referred us and here I am today in front of you. So we have voltage fluctuations, interruptions, then your long interruptions, nothing but a failure for which only a UPS can work. You have spikes, swells, sags, noise, unbalance and harmonic disturbances. So coming back, you have the typical voltage stabilizer which can take care of bulk of the things for most of the machines where too much of sensitive electronics is not available. If sensitive electronics is available, is there, and you need to give it special protection, we have something known as a resonant transformer. So I will just give, because electronics works on single phase. So if I am able to isolate that and I put a resonant transformer, your problem is solved. Then you have the isolation transformer. What's an isolation transformer? What do we do? But most of the time we hear saying the problem is in the neutral. Oh yeah, because we're sharing neutrals, right? So if you have a very sophisticated machine, what we do is we decide what is the current need of the machine. Then the transformer, we take only three phase. We don't take the neutral, right? So I take three phase, delta. And in the transformer, we generate the neutral. That's the star. 
and that neutral we ground it. Now if you see the transformers that you have, you will find this the same thing. HT 22 kV or 11 kV line comes to a transformer. Where is the neutral on the air? No, there's no neutral, there's only three phase. Here, the neutral has got generated and the neutral has got grounded. So you get one zero potential and then the everything works. Now the topic of grounding is, so, is very critical and nobody gives it much you know, thought or looks after it and they face all the consequences. We'll come to that last. So can I, okay. So we have the stabilizer, we have the isolation. Then for applications where like lighting, lifts, or many places where I don't want a precise voltage, I can use any of the uh, inverters, which are back power supply systems. Now, this is a device we've been selling for 30 years, a ferro transformer. Now this device, your voltage, any voltage change will be corrected within one cycle of the waveform, that is 20 milliseconds. Output will remain rock steady. You give it a sudden high voltage, nothing will happen, it's a saturated core transformer, output will still be rock steady. It has total isolation and in a demonstration on the secondary side, I will short phase in neutral, nothing will happen. The magnetic flux will collapse and be normal again. Medical electronics is the biggest beneficiary. They're selling cell counters to all places, rural areas by just saying, aap iske saath ek e laga do, kaam katam. Every India, when they brought digitization, their load cells were blowing. So 25 years back, they were hunting for a solution. They started recommending. So practically where electronics is there and you want to protect electronics, these come only in small capacities, 50 watts to 5 kVA, single phase, you do not get, or two phase, you can't get three phase. We have a solution which is different for three phase. Then this, of course, is everybody uses UPS. So there's nothing. All UPSs are good. It's just that you need a guy who knows how to service it, support it, and give you a reliable solution. Then finally, the three phase. I was having a ferro transformer of a single phase. Now for three phase, we offer what is called an active voltage conditioner, which is nearly like a UPS, but there's no battery. You cannot get a backup. Maybe in two years time, we're gonna come up with a model which will have ultra high capacitors and give you, let's say, 30 seconds or one minute of discharge so the generator can kick on. But let it come. This, I mean, we won't speak about that now. Then, all of you would have got notices saying, power factor you're not maintaining. Earlier they were giving you bonus, now the bonus is gone. Next they want to penalize you. Now they just sent you the first notice. In Tamil Nadu, they have already implemented, long back. So you have to carry out an audit, find out what are the various things. And today there are solutions available for power factor. A lot of panels are available, automatic, except that you need to tune it, okay, to see what you need. Your factory will have multiple machines. At this time this works, that time that doesn't work. So you have to arrive at a solution that will fit your factory. So, but solutions are available. The next day they'll send you saying, please maintain harmonics less than 3%. Now harmonics are the biggest culprits because your transformers get overheated, your switch gears get overheated. So when that stage comes, you need to plan this in such a way that you're ready for that stage of deploying harmonic filters. Okay, this last slide is only talking a few of our customers. Now before I quit, the importance, uh, we will take, do we have five minutes? Yeah. We'll just speak on uh, grounding and earthing, which is a very important subject. And then we'll, we'll be open for, you know, a few questions. Hoshang, over to you. Hello. Mike. Hello. Yeah, good evening. I am Hoshang Udwa here. Well, uh, we all talk of safety. A lot of people uh, talk of safety in the factories. The first and foremost uh, thing in the electrical engineering which I learned way back in my school days was earthing. Now earthing is nothing but ground connection of electricity being touched to that particular pipe or plate or something. Generally I find a lot of contractors putting a half inch pipe with a small funnel in a corner. I have seen in some factories in some printing industry, 
That is our thing. I'm sorry, that is not our thing. That's just namesake our thing. Because it doesn't conduct proper electricity. Because as per IS3043, if you see in IS3043, they provide you options of copper and galvanized. There is a myth in the Indian industry. People say, we are thing lagana hai, theek hai. Copper plate dal do. Sorry. Nowhere in the IS it is mentioned copper is required. Copper is only required for neutral grounding. When I say neutral grounding means, as Mr. Sridhar said, we have a transformer over here, <coughs> the incoming supply. You have a three-phase line, 22K, and you have a star connection over here. Now this connection, which goes into your factory, this point is called a neutral point, and the other thing required for this is what we call neutral grounding. Now this point has to be over here, and this is only copper. I repeat, only copper. With a copper strip, duly plated with tin, otherwise copper also will go, go out six to one, uh, one year. Now this earthing has proper method. Neutral grounding is one of the type of earthing. Second earthing is made from the body. We do it from the body. You have an earthing which is also grounded and this is taken as protective earthing. This goes inside your factory. We call it PE. Generally, if you see in your house, washing machine, televisions, I'm sorry, air conditioners, fridge, they have got earthing. So, let's say in your house, a child by accident touches the fridge and uh, your earthing is weak, he gets a shock. What will happen? Huge amount of problems. If electricity flows from my right hand side, I have got the chances to be saved. But if it flows from the left hand side, your heart is connected. And approximately as per the IS, from the heart, if when it flows, a child can die within 8 milliseconds, milliamperes, I'm sorry. And that's, the speed of electricity is 1,000, 1 lakh, 87,000 miles per second. I'm saying miles per second. Multiply that by 1.6, it is in kilometers per second. So let's say if a child touches a fridge which is having no earthing, and the, the, the current which passes through the body, around 8 to 10 milliamperes is liable to kill a child. Now in a human body, adult body, anything around 22 to 25 milliamps is liable to kill. If it goes, exceeds more than 2 seconds, 3 seconds. Now in IS, our thing is so important, they recommend, you must have heard of earth leakage circuit breakers. Now it is called as RCCB, Restful Current Circuit Breakers. Now this, it, RCCB or ELCB, let's say if you have a single phase connection in your house, I'm coming to the industry part later on, just to give you an example, how important it is. The normal mode of, of connecting in your main switch is MCB, miniature circuit breaker. Now this will cost of 32 amps, somewhere roughly around 800 amperes, with the fitting it will cost you 1500 rupees. This will cost you around 3000 rupees, plus fitting it will say 4500 rupees. Now, is 4,500 important or is the shock to the child or to you is important? That you have to think. The question relies upon you. I am not here to answer that question, but I will suggest you have to go for RCCB because this will function for at least 10 years. 4,500 divided by 10 years, divided by three members in the family, divided by number of years, you will get your answer. How, how safe you are by spending 4,500. And if you don't spend 4,500, well enough. Thank you very much. I am nobody to say anything. Okay. So this is about the single phase in the house. Now coming back to industrial. Protective earthing gives you a solid connection between the earth and the body of the machine. Now let's say your machine It's okay. Let's say this is your machine. And this is your body earth. Okay, many people take a shortcut. They, they take this point and this point is common. Normally this point is separately done at our factory end. Because no, no supplier gives you earthing potential, uh, sorry, protective earthing separately. This is also created if you have your own transformer at your end. This is earth. 
So this is what we call neutral grounding. This is what we call protective earth or earthing. Now as per earthing schedule, there are two options, pipe and plate. One pipe you have to take of 38 mm, that is one and a half inch. I suggest three inches. Very simple, because there is a formula as per IS which defines rho. Now this has got area into consideration. Now in rho, if you see the area, area is more important and conductivity. So of course copper is better for conductivity, so we are using neutral for copper. Copper I am using for neutral. For this grounding, nowhere, nobody should say that only copper is to be used. You can use galvanized iron strips, pure galvanized iron with good micron percentage coating on that. Hot dip, hot dip is the main word. If it is cold dip, it is just painted. So hot dip, if you use 40 by 5 or 30 by 6 or something like that, it is very cheap than copper. It is very secure. The moment you bring that strip from the grounding to your factory, the job is done. You can take tappings from there from, with copper wires and all that. It's not so important. But this grounding is very important for your water potential equipment, which has got electronics. As Mr. Srizo was saying, we need a neutral and we need the earthing. So two methods are there. One is plate earthing and the other one is pipe earthing. Okay. Now when I say plate earthing, we normally use copper plate of say one foot by one foot or maybe one foot by one and a half foot and it will be three mm thick or six mm thick. Now instead of three mm thick plate, I can use a six mm or ten mm thick in galvanized, there are one is copper and second is galvanized iron. So galvanized iron plate will be somewhere around two thousand rupees. This will be around six to eight thousand rupees. So it is three and a half times or four times costlier. I would suggest don't go for copper, go for galvanized for the protective earth. For the neutral grounding where the transformer is fitted, copper is required. Tin copper is required. So anything for plate and pipe is acceptable. Either plate or pipe. Now in my case, what I do? Plate costs 2,000 rupees. Take a pipe, take a plate, sandwich it, put a strip so you get better area. Pipe, if you open out, you get an area. Plate, you have got area of 2 by 2 feet. 6 thick or 10 thick, galvanized plate. And you take that earthing inside your factory with a sleeve put on it, PVC sleeve on it. It will last for 20 years. That earthing will cost you nothing, and something around 28 to 30,000 rupees from the point to your place, let's say five, five meters. So 30,000, is it important or you can wait? Number of workers in your factory and all that, which I told you. So cost is not the criteria, it is only the mental thinking. And many contractors, they have a single small pipe, I've seen, thin pipe with a small funnel. Sabi earthing ka milta hai market mein, 900 rupiah ga hai. Very cheap. Bohut sasta hai sab, dal dega. It's maybe around Six feet, he'll put it, he'll put a small pit. I've seen in a doctor's clinic yesterday, four pits were made, small pits. The same thing was there. Pipe was only half inch. So he's cutting cost over there. The contractor is very smart because he has to make money. But he's not understanding the repercussion of it. Now due to this faulty thing, there is something called conductance. If the conductance is not okay, you will not get the neutral to earth voltage. There's something called neutral to earth voltage, what we carry out in in our engineering terms. If this is not less than 5 volts as per IS, it should be 5 volts. Or in my case, I consider it as 2 volts. This is very important. I have seen in my building last year 0.5. So anything less than 2 volts is So if we, I will conclude on this. If we do proper earthing and proper neutral grounding, you will get this voltages, you will clear all the mitigation problems and nothing will be left. Thank you. And gentlemen, all this thing is available in detail in your issues, November, December, January, February, March and April. And thank you Prashant and Shripath for wonderfully putting up the bulletin. And they were asking me, why don't you write more? I said, I have read so many issues. I have given credit in the issues to the people from whom I have collated that information. But I said, I need people to get engaged and ask questions. So my request is, if you have any problems to your association, please send them you know, questions. 
and as a question and answer, we'll share it with you and for everybody's benefit. Thank you so very much for this opportunity. Uh, thank you, Sridhar and Hoshang. I was thinking when the earth came out, that the Sita Maya had to be in the earth, in the Ramayana. So I think, if we do it in a good way, and the earth came out in the earth, then we won't have time to be in the earth. Wow! Correct? Let's go. Having said that, uh, thank you for having said that. Any questions for uh, Sridhar and Hoshang? Yeah. Please, please, uh, get a mic, please. Hoshang, please. We'll use this, we'll use this. Hello. Yes. Uh, I had a question. Uh, recently, I bought a UPS from a company called Console Neovat. Yes. For one of our high-end machines. Right. And uh, we did a copper earthing uh, for a very good consultant. Right. But we have noticed at times uh, when the power goes, in spite of having a UPS, and it's over-capacity UPS. Right. Uh, we noticed that in the machines, uh, some fuse, you know, a uh, couple of times that fuse went, which is a very low-voltage fuse. In fact, you also called the UPS company to assess it. Okay. And they couldn't find a solution that why it has happened. So okay. it made me really worried and spend, after spending so much of money, lakhs and lakhs of rupees on a UPS, okay. why did we encounter this problem? No, no, let me come to this. Uh, nothing wrong with the product or the company. Let us understand one small thing. Okay. In the flow of things, in my factory, I have a supply. And from that supply, I've tapped and so many machines are connected. Now for this particular high-end machine, I put up a UPS. I have put a UPS and then given the supply further. Now can you, we need to ask a question, is something happening within the machine? Is there a fault? What, you, what I'm requesting each one of you is please maintain logs, simple. Put a book and a log. That log will say when that incident occurred, what are the other things that happened? If you start maintaining a log, these problems can be fought, caught out. There is a possibility sometimes, let's say any drive is going bad or there's a f fault. When, when does the fuse blow? Uh, the fuse? When, the, when the power goes, yeah. so the power went, like uh, my factory is in Bihandi. Yeah. No, uh, let me come back. Yeah. When does the fuse blow? When, there is when, the, over when the current, when the there's fuse is always a current. Spike, right. no, no, yeah. When the current exceeds, the fuse has a time and the current has to exceed. So, first is to verify whether the correct rated fuses are being put. Sometimes what happens, the guys are not rating, let's go, it will load not so much. Okay, so we need to actually, what we'll do is, specific cases, we'll try to visit. See, we look for holistic. So, we try to see, okay, what is there, what next. If you're able to maintain a log and say, these are the times that has happened, this was the time of the day, a pattern can be found out. And I'm definitely sure one over a point of time should be nipped. Also, one, one last question yes. what I have is that uh, since you have a UPS, now you have this active voltage conditioner. Yeah. So do you need to also have an active voltage no. conditioner once uh, you have a UPS? See, um, no. The answer is no. I'm just giving you the answer. If my, if my machine is in a, working in a place where I don't have a power interruption, or it's very rare, or if an interruption occurs, doesn't matter. I will manage, I know I have to do a little bit of cleaning. Then the, AV, the active voltage condition is an alternative to the UPS. UPS ka battery cost is removed. I have the UPS cost and this is less than 60 per, less than for, I mean, less than half the cost of the UPS. And I don't have the additional cost of replacing batteries. But if your machine cannot handle a you know, power interruption and you're going to have some losses of parts blowing, you have no choice but to go for UPS. But I find a lot of machines today can handle because all your motors, if a power fails, nothing will happen. The motor will have some kinetic energy, it moves and it stops. So there should not be a problem. So we need to engage the machine manufacturer saying if power interrupts, is there a problem? No problem. The AVC is alternative. But if you're in a place where you're consistently teen, din mein teen bar, char bar cut hota hai, your production is going to get affected. You have no choice but to go for a UPS. And yes, please. Yeah. Mike here, Mike. Here. Oh, anyway. Okay, no problem. Uh, can I ask before you? Yeah. 
Actually, you said something about the brain and the, yes. uh, the other part of the machine. Yes. But, uh, I mean, we've also been working with online since about uh, the early 90s. Right. And uh, Madhav had suggested me to put a CVT yes. on. So, is that a solution? 100%. Yeah. Now, so, uh, yeah. if you're able to, let's say you have a three-phase big machine and you have a control electronics. Now, the control electronics is working only on 230 volt supply. So, if I'm able to get tap that portion in that entire circuitry where my supply is coming to the control electron and I put a ferro transformer there, my problem is solved. This ferro transformer is a wonderful thing. Come hell or high water, nothing will pass through. That is only up to 50 kilowatts. Uh, 5 kilowatts, single phase. Yeah. But the same thing we are recreating by putting an AVC along with a transformer, isolation transformer. So we are giving you that same level of production in three phase where you can't isolate the brain. Yeah, but we did have a very good experience with the AVC and a lot of thinking had to be done. AVC? Which company? Have, I know. Yeah, we are aware of it. Now there were, but uh, among the various people whom we have supplied, in fact, incidentally, then we found out where the issue was and after we attended to that, I don't think there has been any issue on the AVC after that. <laughs> Please do. And I only hope the 15 others who didn't have a problem will also send me a credit. Thank you so very much. Any other question? Yes, Sir, please. there are two questions. One thing is uh, about the power factors. Yes. Uh, before two months, I think they started with the relation with the load and lead. Yes. Please explain that process. Yeah. That is one. And secondly, uh, there is a what we observed it in capacitor bank. Yes. The power factor we're getting 0 0.9899, 99, whereas in MSAB meter, we're not getting the same. The reason behind that. Okay. This, I think, I'll give my colleague, Hoshang. In fact, incidentally, in my team, I have, you know, delegated Hoshang to specifically handle this new arena of, you know, power factor improvement. So, I would like him to answer. See, one uh, example uh, which I've been going through in one of the companies. You have an incoming MSB supply. I am giving a single line diagram. This is the MSB meter over here. Then you have your panel distribution board or PCC, what we call power control center. And then you have your other motor control centers or whatnot. Now, metering by MSB, they put meters. Okay, fine. The meters are there. But in one of the companies which I'm handling currently with Mr. Tushar, the MSB meter shows X power factor. And the panel which we have installed over here, APFC panel, currently, just on 30th of March, is showing me 0.985 or something, or plus 98 or 990. Now, MSB says, Anything above point, yeah, 0.95 is acceptable. So sometimes what happens, the MSB meter also is a faulty thing because it's not calibrated every year. Now what we provide in that panel is already a new meter and calibrated. So sometimes it may be of the difference of the meter. We need to check. It cannot be overruled. Yes, there can be a problem. See, uh, when I say lag, means the current waveform is lagging behind the voltage in inductive circuits, non-linear circuits, the current lags. That means the graph of the wave cycle of the voltage and current. The current is going behind the voltage. It has, it has got a certain, per, per, certain percentage of angle, what we defined in power factor. It's a ratio. So that is a cosine angle of the uh, difference of the current and the voltage. Now when it goes, when the current goes in the plus side, when it leads, that also is not acceptable by MSCB because leading current is also not acceptable. So you should have anything in lagging from 0 0.95 and above till 0 0.999. That is the thing. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Hoshang. Uh, in fact, uh, we'll have to wrap this particular session because we are seven minutes behind schedule. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Sridhar and Hoshang. Just be on the stage. And I would request uh, Mr. Tushar Bhotika to come and present the momento, please. Bhai sahab, taliya baja yaar, bahut achcha information diya hai unhone yaar. Thank you, Mr. Shridhar and Mr. Oshan. Thank you. Thank you.